Welcome to Studio 4, where personalities, politics, and potpourri combine to create a bouquet of fun, spirited, and lively conversation. My guest today, New York Times best-selling author Michael Ian Black. Welcome to Studio 4. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm an I'm a admirer of the show. Your new memoir is a collection of pithy observations and your experiences as a husband, father, and lover. Your wife, Martha, Martha or Marsha? Martha. 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 Is a central character in the book. Tell us how you met. Uh, we met when I was working on a TV show and I was uh, 23 and Randy mm -hmm. and uh, she had a boyfriend at the time but we started having an affair which I document in the book and it's um, a great story and then we've been married uh, for a long time I don't know how long but a long time in the book you talk about your ambivalence about buying a new car right what was that all about so I was driving around in this silver Volkswagen new Beetle which is a car my wife wanted. And it just, you know, you've seen these things. They're just, they're the most oh, yeah. effeminate cars on the road. Mm -hmm. They just look like shaved vaginas. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. And so I decided to get a BMW. But I had all this ambivalence about it because I always thought to myself, oh, BMW, that's what douchebags drive. Douchebags. Right? Douchebags. Yeah. And I was like, that's for suburban jerks with a wife and two kids. And then I realized that's exactly what I am. And BMW knew this. They knew me better than I knew myself. And so I bought it. I bought the car. I love the car. The car is amazing. The, car's, the car makes me a better human being. What kind of car do you drive? I also drive a BMW. Really? You love it, right? Oh, I love it. It's a great car. I love it. And we're, 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 tell me about that suit. Where'd that come from? No, this is just off the rack. Really? Off the rack? Because you wear it very well. No, because I, I'm a sample uh -huh. size, so I can wear modest uh -huh. clothes. That's why. You have broad shoulders. That's why. You have no, like a swimmer's why. build. Just a genetic fluke. Yeah. What, what's your exercise program? What do you do? Do a little light jogging. Uh-huh. I do that. No. I do some light jogging. No. My workout regimen is... Yeah. No, I'm just blessed genetically. Good for you, man. But one of the things I like so much about this book, and I did like the book very much. Thank you. Is that it's not only funny, it's also very personal. What do you think your kids will think about this book? Because so much of it is about being a parent, being a father. The thing that people don't talk about with parenthood is uh, that a lot of times you just hate your kids. Do you have kids? No, I don't have any children. Why, so you don't want kids? No, and after reading this, I, I never will have them. Wait, my book made you not want kids? No, you paint, you paint a horrid picture of parenthood. I sort of wanted to break the taboo a little bit of saying, yeah, I love my kids, but a lot of times, I mean, you know, it, it, being a parent is like, you know, it, it's like surviving Hurricane Katrina or something. Well, I don't think being a parent is worse than Hurricane Katrina. I don't know why you would say that. Well, no, 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 that you, you, you're right misunderstanding me. I mean, I, no, that, uh, frankly, it's I mean, offensive I, when you say I apologize, like it was not intended to be offensive. I'm just saying it's like a natural disaster when you have children. I'm saying it's like the worst thing that can possibly happen. And this is one of the reasons why people get upset with you, Michael, because you, you, you just, you lob these rhetorical hand grenades out there. I, I, you know, it's I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, maybe I was exaggerating a little it's bit offensive. for comedic effect, but I was not intending. Why don't you get over yourself, man? How about this? How about you get over yourself? Suddenly, I feel like you're just laying into me for no reason at all. I make an off-the-cuff remark, and suddenly you turn on a dime, son. You know, I read this book, and I thought to myself, oh, you know, he's, he's, he's not that dickhead that I see on, uh, what are you on? I've been on a lot of things. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What exactly. Because you can't keep a show on the air. I thought, no, this is, this is a guy with a warm heart and a loving family, and then you come on here and you compare being a parent to I don't, I don't understand Katrina. what your problem is. No, you're turning me off, and I think you're turning off all the viewers uh, for Studio 4. Studio 4 is not your that great. Personalities and politics. You're and a Charlie Rose wannabe. Well, that's what you are. I'm sorry it came you're to You're a Charlie this. Rose wannabe. And I wish you success with the book. Uh, as I said, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Uh, and now, meeting the man behind the book, I'm enjoying it a little bit less. Nevertheless, I wish you good luck and continued success. Join us next time on Studio 4, where my guest will be somebody. <laughs> <laughs>